So um, all these techniques, uh, we basically, we have to be able to build the application now in Ignition and, and to be able to apply these techniques. And so I want to show you a couple of just some cool, uh, basically tips and tricks, if you will, that you can do with Ignition um, to, to, you know, to, to apply these different techniques here. So let me open up my designer here. Uh, I actually have this window that um, the, the fixed HMI that uh, Stephen just talked about here, I actually have it completed in Ignition. So we're actually going to uh, make this available so people can download this .project file and play around with it some more. Um, and so we're, we're going to come back and talk a little bit more about all the, the techniques you know, that we're using here. But um, if I look at you know, the fixed window and, of course, the navigation window here that, that, we've, that we've developed. Now, to, to do what, um, what he was talking about here, one of the first techniques that I want to show you in Ignition is, is being able to uh, use a grid. We talk, he talked about a 12-column format, and you know, to really be able to apply that, you want to be able to line things up correctly and kind of know where things are. And so in, inside of Ignition, when you're developing screens, you can actually turn on a grid. So if you go up here to View, I can show the grid, and I can uh, specify the grid size if I want it to be smaller or larger. So here I have a grid size of 10, um, which allows me to I, more or less you can use those as columns, but um, you know you can kind of see things according to the grid, and we can snap to the grid. So when I have components on the window, um, you know it, it's very easy for me to snap them to kind of see uh, where where they are, and I can work with it more. So that's one technique that is really important. Another is being able to align things. Um, it's very easy, you know, when you drag a bunch of stuff onto a screen. So here I have a bunch of LEDs. Uh, they could be all different sizes. You know, you're not really paying much attention to, um, you know, to the, the 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 order of all of this. But you know, you want to be able to to use a drag and drop piece of ignition, right? So you can drag tags. So over here, I could take a ramp valley, drag it on here as an LED display or different components. And then later on, I want to go and align these these things. So we can actually select multiple components on a window. And up here at the top, there are quite a few different alignment tools. Um, these two right here are really the most important. Uh, this allows you to align two or more components in a row or in a, in a stack. And so let's say I want to do it in a stack here. So I actually align the stack, and I can select the normalize. And normalize, what it's going to allow us to do is actually keep everything being the, the, the same consistent size. I can then specify the padding between. So I'm going to do it a stack. It will be from top to bottom, so it'll be vertical. I'll put a five pixel padding between it. Now I have all my LEDs lined up perfectly with a five pixel padding, and we normalized all of the sizes. So it really allows us to come back later uh, to, you know, to, to align them, and then potentially you can right click and you can group them together. So now you have a group that you can move around, and again, working with the grid, you know where things are on the screen. Another, as far as align, another technique that's really well, that's really important. Let's say you have two different, complete, completely different components. Uh, so say I have, you know, my uh, tank here, and I have a button, and I want to essentially al align these things either to the top or to the bottom. Um, they're not the same size, but I want to be able to align them. I, I want this to be perfectly centered of this tank, uh, but I don't know where that center is. What you can do is actually select both these components, and up here you can actually align the left edge, the right edge, the top edge. If I go top or bottom, um, I can do that, or I can go center, which will align them perfectly center, and then I can move them around together on the screen. So these alignment tools are really powerful here that we that we that you have in Ignition. Another technique um, that we're gonna, we're going to talk about here is is being able to apply, of course, uh, a style. You know, the colors and the fonts and all of that that uh, he was talking about. So um, what I suggest that everybody uh, does when they are you know, doing a project for the first time is to first build a little style guide you're going to use for Ignition. I'm bringing one up here so you can see what I'm referring to. All right, so here is a, a little preliminary style guide that uh, I like to start with. Essentially, I like to identify the fonts that I'm using in Ignition. Uh, you know, primary and secondary. I typically use Arial and Dialog. Those two fonts are pretty much consistent across all uh, operating systems and all machines are out there. You don't want to use two crazy fonts because not every machine is going to have it and it's going to default to something else and you may get cut off or just may not look good. So to keep that consistent, go with things that are really well known. Then you can identify some some simple font sizes uh, to, so you can be consistent with your project. You know, your Maybe it's maybe your captions, the small the small text you have, then or normal window text that is 12 points, and I have a section header, 
uh, and then the actual header for the window. You can identify those, and we and we're going to show how we can make templates off of these so we can be continue to be consistent. Also, identifying the colors that we like to use in the application so that people that are, if you have multiple developers on project, they're using the same consistent colors for red and for green. Uh, it's, it's really, really important to do so. And then I also like to kind of put in the iconography so they at least see that the style that you're using, um, you know, the flat style, uh, this here we're using in this case, um, but so that if you're creating new, you have if you need new types of images or icons that you're consistent with the rest of them, so that's not you're not going off here. That's one thing I like to do, and then I like to apply that style in ignition. So if we go back here to the designer, um, what I've done over here is I've created templates, and templates are a really important thing because they allow you to de design something in one place, and you can use it throughout your entire project. So you'll see here that I made one called caption text, and uh, this basically has built into it the font and the size and the color uh, that is ready to go. So if I, I can put this on any window I want, so here is my caption. I just put the value to, to for the text I want, put it on the window, and if I need to later go and change the font or change the style, something about that, I can go into, go and do it in one place. And so I've done that for the caption, for the regular window text, uh, for, you know, and you can, of course, make, we can make these things bigger. Uh, and the section header text, as well as, of course, the overall header for the window. Uh, so I, that's one thing I like to do is use templates a lot. The same thing goes for, we look at the, the HMI that, that uh, we're looking here, when it comes to the fans uh, or the pumps or the tanks or the valves or even the labels here that have the style on them, these should all be created in one place. And, uh, and that's what we've done here. So. If, you, if I look, I'll see that I have, you know, the valve, and I've made it, the styles in there, the colors are appropriate, so of course now I can go and find a tag, let's say I want to look at Rideable Integer 2, and we've made the drag and drop with existing templates very easy, so you can drag this Rideable Integer 2, and I can select the valve template, and you can see that it's showing the open and it's showing the closed uh, based on the values that we have there. So that way, again, I can go into one place and, and design it. The, the last thing I want to talk about here um, is, is one thing that can really help, I think, save a, a lot of time when it comes to a color. You know, it's, it, we talked about you know, that little style guy where, where we specify all the colors we want to use, but now when it comes to actually designing, you may have all these different windows and different places you want to use these colors, and if you go and separately develop them everywhere, if you want to change that color tomorrow, you've got to go to every window, every component, search your place, and it, it could be a little bit difficult. What I suggest, a little cool technique, is to create the, these things called client tags. Um, so client tags in addition are basically variables that you can have within the client. And I have created this whole style folder with various just simple memory values that are all strings that are the colors that we want to use uh, throughout the application. And in my templates, I have the foreground color and the background colors and these things already linked to, uh, to, to these colors here. So um, let me show you what kind of what I mean. If I put a label here and I want the label of the that uh, the foreground here to be take the the text foreground, I drag it down to the foreground color. Now of course it's going to change that one. Now if I go change the foreground color to something else, let's say I make it this uh, this light blue instead, then you can see that everywhere all of these texts, all the light blues have changed. Uh, or the, the foreground colors have changed to that one single color. You can change it back to the 4D, now everywhere that's being used. So by kind of identifying the style in these, these client tags, we could have one place to go to kind of change that and to, to really work with it. You can even go further and make your application themed, um, but I don't think theming, theming is that important. It's just, it's just a way of being able to, to, to design it very, very easily and rapidly. So using these techniques, it can really help you with the with what um, Stephen has shown here today. You know, when it comes down to it, it's it's about it's about when you have lots of developers just being consistent, use, doing the same things, uh, being aware of, of what you're building, and not trying to duplicate effort. Uh, so the much you can, the, the more you can put into one place, the better you're going to be off in your application. And I also will say to use SVGs, um, icons on buttons and labels. It's okay to use images, but everywhere else in the application, you should use vector graphics because they scale very nicely. You don't have any pixelation that happens when the, the client gets so large out there. So the more you can use SVGs, the better. 
A good resource, since we talked about resource earlier, is openclipart.org. They have great SVGs that you could bring into your application.